Hello and welcome to the second video about my Ford Raptor project. I'll start with a quick recap for those of you that haven't seen the first video and there's a link to that below if you're interested in watching it. So I have this Ford Raptor body from a new Bright RC and I tried fitting it to an axial chassis but it didn't work out for me. So I've bought a G-Made GSO2 bomb kit because the chassis has rear cantilever suspension which could be ideal for the Raptor body to sit low on the chassis without having to make big holes in the floor of the rear bed for the shock towers which has been done to this Raptor. I'm also using parts from my spares box to keep the cost down which include this Tamiya 60 amp brushed ESC, a Rock Hobby 35 turn 550 brushed motor and a Rock Hobby 15 kg Metal Gear waterproof servo. These parts have never been used and were taken from RCs that I've upgraded but they should be good for the trail running I'll be doing with the Raptor build. To start, I removed the parts from the box I'd be using, which left the body set, rear cage, wheels and tyres and foams that I'd be selling on to recuperate some money towards this project. The first step of this build is the axles, and I started with the front. The diff gears and bearings are metal, and when they were assembled, I put them into the axle and fitted the metal diff cover. Then the C-hubs, then the CVAs, and then the knuckles. Then I built the rear axle in the same way. The next stage was the transmission. This also has metal gears and metal bearings. Once assembled, I put them in the transmission casings and added some grease. Next is the spur gear and conical washers, and then I fixed the whole transmission assembly to the chassis plate, and that completed the axle and transmission stages of the build. The next stage was assembling the battery tray and servo mount unit, which is pretty much the same design as the Axial SCX-10 II. Now it was time to start making the chassis and fitting everything into it. This is always my favourite part of the build, because for me it feels like the RC starts to come alive. Now the transmission, battery tray and servo were in, the next step was to fit this box, and when it's in place it looks like a scale oil sump. The next stage was to make the metal suspension links and then fit them into the chassis. Next I installed the motor into the chassis, which screws into this motor plate using a choice of numbered holes for different size pinion gears. A 32 pitch 13 tooth pinion is provided with the kit, so I screwed the motor into the appropriate holes on the plate. Then I fitted the cover plate, and this completed the installation of the motor. Right, now it was on to building the shocks. G-made shocks have a good rep, and I'm very impressed with the set on my other bomb which are the same as these. The bodies are metal and the assembly was straightforward, adding oil after the pistons were assembled and letting them sit until any air bubbles had disappeared. I was at this stage by late afternoon, so I left them overnight. And this is the shocks fully assembled the next morning. The two long ones have thin soft springs and go on the front of the chassis, and the two short ones have thicker, harder springs and will fit into the cantilever mechanism on the back. The next stage was to assemble part of the drive shafts and fit them to the axles. Then I assembled the other half of the drive shafts and fit them to the transmission in the chassis. Now it was time for something I'd never done before and I'd been looking forward to very much ever since I bought the kit, which was assemble and fit the cantilever suspension mechanism. Following the instructions carefully, it was very straightforward and didn't take long to do. Then I had to put in the shocks and the tops slot into the rear chassis rail and are held in place with screws and the bottoms are fixed into the cantilever brackets with bolts and nylock nuts. The next job was to fit the rear and front axles while connecting the suspension links and drive shafts. Then I installed the front shocks. The next stage was to make up the steering links for the front axle and fit them. So that's where I am with the chassis build now. The manual does continue to show you where to put the ESC in the receiver box and also these side steps. Now the ESC and receiver box may go somewhere different. That all depends on how the body fits. And the same with these side steps. I would like to fit them, but that also depends on the body, how that fits and if these side steps would actually fit. The rest of the manual is just the front bumper, wheels and tyres, oh, front body posts, which again 
all depends on where the uh, the body fits and I'm going to be using body magnets and not drilling holes in the body with those and then onto the actual bomb body itself and rear cage which again I'm not using so as far as this manual's concerned I'm pretty much finished with it So the next video about this project will be fitting the new bright Ford Raptor body and I've just sat it loosely on top of the chassis to give an idea of what that will look like. It will sit better once I've made a few adjustments to it which will include moving some posts which are part of the body and stop it sitting flat on the chassis rails. But more about that later. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you for the next video.